All right, we've got a battle here that's as good as Ford versus Chevy. We've got your rotary, we've got your DA. What's gonna be the best for you? Stay tuned, we're gonna go over that next. Hi, I'm Todd with Esoteric. Today we are here to talk about rotary polishing versus DA polishing. What are the differences between them and when are you gonna use one versus the other? Now, just to give you a quick background, a rotary, it's something that's been around forever and a day. Uh, a rotary is a forced rotation, just spinning around in a circle. A DA, it is spinning, but it's also oscillating this way too, hence the name uh, a dual action. So what are the differences between the two? When are you gonna use one versus the other? Uh, are there safety issues? Is there speed uh, considerations to think about? Uh, we're gonna dive into all of that. Now, go back in time. Really, everybody was using a rotary to do paint correction, going in, polishing out paint, getting rid of defects, get, and getting rid of uh, sanding marks, so on and so forth. Rotary was really the only thing on the block. The DA, I mean, it's been around for a while, but most people are using DA maybe for uh, sanding or applying a sealant or a wax or something, not really into paint correction. Well, you go back to, uh, let's call it about 2010 or so, all of a sudden you started seeing a lot more work being done by the dual action machine. We start getting better pads, we start getting better polishes uh, and compounds. Then Meguiar's came along with their microfiber cutting disc and that really changed the way things were done. Uh, here at Esoteric, we were fortunate enough to be on that pre-production development team. We got a lot of insight uh, into that product and got to work directly with uh, um, Meguiar's on that product before it hit the market. And what we found, even back then when we had a short throw dual action machine, like the old Porter Cables, was that we could get a tremendous amount of cut on a dual action, but then we were going and doing our finishing work uh, still with a rotary. And we were some of the first ones to adopt it. I wrote an article about it a long time ago. It was called uh, uh, Rotary Compounding, Is It Dead? And it caused a lot of controversy out there because there were people saying, there's no way that you can get uh, the same kind of correction with a dual action that what you can with a rotary. Some of that was just ego driven because quite frankly, with a rotary, you had to really master that skill. It took a long time. Whereas with a dual action machine, somebody relatively new uh, could get into it and do a fantastic job. But then once uh, the technology started increasing, we started getting better pads, we started getting better polish and compound uh, uh, formulations out there. And then when machines like the Rupus hit here that has a much larger orbit to it, it gave a lot more performance over what was available before. Then the industry really started making a shift towards the dual action machine for both cutting and for polishing. If you look at the detailing world, most everybody has switched over to this. If you look at like the body shop world, most people are still on the rotary simply because they haven't been exposed to these kind of technologies. And if they did, I think they would find out like us, they would be making a change. Now for us on a rotary, we haven't used a rotary here at Esoteric for at least eight or nine years other than to spin dry pads. They're great, you put a wet pad on it, you put it over in a bucket, you turn it on high, spins all the water out, does a fantastic job. Now, we've got some good friends in the industry that you know been around for a long time. They came over, uh, worked with us on some projects. They still like to use the rotary in their shop. You know, and we had that Ford versus Chevy moment uh, going on here. We're battling back and forth. Uh, DA's better, rotary's better. So what did we do? We took a test panel and we went and worked on it. He did a three-step process. Now his compounding stage was quicker than my compounding stage on the DA, but he had two more steps to do. I did one more step afterwards. In the end, we took our measurements and it was you know, virtually no difference whatsoever. You know, If people say they can go in with a rotary after doing this and refine the finish more, then you're not doing something right on here. You need to learn that step uh, a little bit better. And when you're talking about the time differences between these two uh, machines, particularly if you're a DIY uh, a person at home, with this three-step process and the amount of extra time it takes on your finishing step, 
I can blaze through finishing much, much quicker uh, on this than what I can uh, with this. That allows you more time to go out and drive the car, less time worrying about being in your garage working on the vehicle. And if you're doing just one step processes, DA machine, you can blaze through it super quick. You're not worried about holograms. You're not having to take it out in the sun all the time and check for what the condition of the paint is. If you have two equal people, you know, very skilled person working your rotary, very skilled person uh, working the dual action machine, when it's all said and done, you're gonna have about the same uh, finish on there. How do we know that? with our DOI meter. You've been following us long enough, you've seen we talk a lot about this meter. This takes subjectivity completely out of it and, and we can uh, gauge at the microscopic level basically what kind of correction and finish that we're getting out of it. What other things do you have to think about when you're using these two? One, this takes a lot of time to master. You have a lot of high risk with this, burning edges. It is not easy to use. And if you're like us and you've got employees, you wanna get them up and train, you can get them trained very quickly with a DA. It takes a year plus to really get mastered at this. Here at the Elite Detailer Academy, we've been teaching students for uh, almost eight years now. We teach them on the DA. We can get somebody up and running at a extremely high level in just two days. You couldn't even think about doing that with uh, a rotary. So you have to think about those things when you're trying to, to decide what you want to use, which is better for you. If you're somebody that you're still using uh, the rotary with a great big dirty old wool pad and old technology uh, compounds and polishes and you haven't changed, if you learn the right way to use one of these, I think you're gonna switch over really quickly because you're gonna find you're gonna do it with a lot less effort, a lot less risk, and you can get a job done in just two steps, whereas once again, it would take three steps uh, with this one. So we've talked about it in other videos and, and people wanna argue, no, I can, I can get the job done much faster with a, a rotary or cut faster than I can with a DA. Well, like I said, you may be able to get your initial cut done a little bit more quickly, but then you figure your finishing steps afterwards compared to what you have with this, it kind of negates uh, all of that. And being able to do it with a lot less risk, a lot less time taping up of the vehicle, you're not worried about damage nearly as much with something like this than you are with a rotary. Now, if you're one of those people that work with a rotary, you're extremely skilled at it, you know how to do it, you know the right way to use wool pads. I'd say most people with a rotary working with wool pads, you may have two or 3% of the people that really know how to work it well. But if that works for you and that's what you like, there's nothing wrong with it at all whatsoever. Um, if you're a person who hasn't tried one of these and you want to you know, make your decisions based off of theory or whatever else, you're really missing out on what you can accomplish with this. Also in this business of detailing, most of what is done is a single step polish. Uh, you've got one pad, you've got one polish. In that case, you're going to get a better cut and a better finish with a DA, because if you're going for a higher level of correction with a rotary with a one step, you're probably gonna end up with holograms or swirls left in it you don't have that issue when you're working with a DA. So those are some of the things to, uh, to think about it. If you're new starting out, I would absolutely go this direction because you can become much more proficient at it much more quickly with a, a very low risk rate compared to what you're doing with uh, the rotary. Once again, if you're using rotary, you're very good at what you do continue on with it. There's nothing wrong with it whatsoever. Here for us at Esoteric, the rotary makes no sense uh, whatsoever. We have no need for it other than spin drying pads uh, like we talked about. So hopefully that gives you a little bit better uh, background and understanding on the differences between a rotary and a DA, what their strengths and weaknesses are, 
and it, it may better guide you in which direction that you want to go with it. So if you want to chime in on the debate or the conversation uh, about the Ford versus Chevy that we have here, make sure and leave your comments uh, below. If you've got some questions about either of the machines, leave them as well. I'm the person that goes in and answers on the questions. Now, if you're interested in learning more about how to get more out of your polishing with the DA, check out the next video that we're gonna link here. It goes into five very key important steps in DA polishing so that you can operate at the highest level.